Okay, so we're starting off our educated consumer checklist with probably one of the most common things that family members hear from a loved one who's in treatment, and that's, I'm not as bad as everybody else here. And the response to this one happens to be one of the more overarching ones as far as how much material we're going to review. Because it's basically all of module one, which is all about what it means to be diagnosed with substance use disorder. Now, more often than not, when we hear this from a client, it's usually going to be a case of someone whose drug of choice is alcohol or pot, and they're comparing themselves to the heroin user or the meth user. I'm not as bad as these other people here. But that's an invitation to lead you down a misinformed path that can end up wasting a whole lot of treatment time. Because what we need to focus on is the fact that if a client meets the criteria to be admitted to an intensive substance use treatment program, there's a reason for them being there. And if they're complaining about not being as bad as everybody else there, that's just an indication that they're not understanding the implications of what it means to be diagnosed with substance use disorder. And so really, this is a matter of contemplation, which we talked about in Module 3. Do they accept that they have a problem? And more importantly, if they're saying yes to that, do they really understand what that means? And that's why we're going to review Module 1 in its entirety. We're going to go through the whole module, pointing out how each section relates to how we respond when someone's comparing themselves to others with regard to the severity of their condition. So, for example, Video 1, right out of the gate, states that the problem is that we're not all on the same page as far as defining what it means to have a problem. And that's where the rest of the module comes in, because then videos two and three are going to go into the history of identifying substance use disorder as a diagnosable medical condition that exists on a spectrum with categories of mild, moderate, and severe. And the point there is that we're talking about a diagnosable medical condition. If you've got it, you got it, and it needs to be treated. Videos 4 and 5 then go into more detail about the severe end of the spectrum and in particular point out some of the more common misperceptions that are major contributors to denial about addiction. Then videos 6 through 11 examine specific characteristics of addiction and the implications those hold for treatment and recovery. And the point that we need to emphasize there is that it doesn't make any difference whether the drug of choice is marijuana or methamphetamine. So, for example, the client who's addicted to marijuana needs to understand that his condition is chronic, as in, he's not going to get fixed just because he spent a couple of weeks fighting with the staff in rehab. Or that the progressive nature of his condition means he could very well end up back in treatment a couple years from now, only this time way worse. So if your loved one's saying, I'm not as bad as everybody else here, and using that as a reason for wanting to leave treatment, go ahead and dive back into Module 1, listening to it from the perspective of how it validates that this is a medical condition that exists on a spectrum, and a person's outward circumstances are far from the only thing that determines what kind of problems that condition is causing or will continue to cause in the future. But the important thing to remember here is, it's not your job to teach them all this. They're learning this in treatment. They're just not choosing to let it sink in. Your response would be, I'm sorry, you're obviously not understanding your diagnosis. And it sounds like maybe you should go back and get some help from your counselor about this one. 